the lord bless you welcome to the school of the prophets now what we do here is that we encourage ourselves as ministers of god is a platform for ministers everyone who's called into ministry either as a pastor apostle prophet evangelist teacher or you have a ministry gift you're a helper you're a deacon you're a deaconess or you're just generally um somebody who has a passion for ministry currently or you are still in the incubation process of the call of god so what we do is that we we discuss we rub minds lately for a couple of weeks i've been talking about seven ministers that affected my life um we considered quite a couple of them it's very important that we study the lives of ministers especially generous who were a blessing to our lives you see the bible said paul was speaking in first Corinthians chapter 2 verse 11 he said first Corinthians 11 rather verse 1 he said follow me as i follow christ follow me as i follow christ you must follow somebody so don't let nobody deceive you that oh you are a child of god you don't need anybody or you don't need a father you just go to god directly just go to god even jesus said no man goes to the father but by me to assess certain dimensions you need a model you cannot build a house without having a model you need a model but those who don't have the spirit of god cannot discern this Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 says that the carnal man cannot understand the things of the spirit when you hear some people talk about ministers of god ministries first Corinthians 2 14 the natural man cannot understand the things of the spirit so when people begin to talk about ministry analyze and talk about they are they are carnal they are carnal the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12, follow them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. So as a minister of God, if you want to make impact, you must follow people. God must reveal people to you. But a person who is not spiritual, who is only logical, you see, you cannot follow the spirit of God, you cannot be obedient to the spirit of God by human knowledge there's a difference between common sense and sound mind there's a difference between common sense and sound mind common sense is a function of logic rational thinking but sound mind is a function of the holy spirit sound mind is not common sense common sense said this you put one two together this and this does not add up but sound mind when you are following god it doesn't make natural sense how do you explain that someone came to this world without the human conception how do you explain that peter had to follow jesus when peter was 47 jesus was 30. jesus was not a professional Matthew was a tax collector. Luke was a doctor. How would they follow a young boy of 30? This is not spiritual. So you cannot talk about... That is why I tell people, don't argue with people. A spiritual person does not argue. Stop arguing with people. When people say this like that, lead them to what they believe. But walk with the Holy Ghost. Sometimes when you are walking with the Holy Ghost, it doesn't make sense. I'm telling the truth. So today I want to consider a man of God who is late. His name is Apostle Joseph Ayo Babalola. This man affected my life in prayer. I prayed the way I pray because I encountered this man's ministry. Now, this man was born 1904. And um, he was a man who was um, walking on the tractor. He walked with the tractor. One time while he was working, the tractor suddenly stopped. And he had his name three times. 
the voice called his name and God said to him I've called you to the ministry but he wouldn't totally submit to the Lord the Lord appeared to him again Jesus appeared to him this time and said I've called you to do ministry and he answered but the Lord gave him two things one of them the Lord gave him a bottle and said always use water and the Lord gave him a bell and said always ring this bell so his ministry was characterized by two things a Bible a bottle of water and a bell so everywhere he goes he will hold the bell he will ring the bell and that informed that informed why his ministry they use water now this tells us something never do what another minister does unless it is revealed to you don't copy people because when a man uses water uses all of that he might be led of the spirit and this also tells you don't criticize people you don't know where they met god don't don't say people are wrong because they don't do what you do you are not god god is not from your village god is not your uncle god is not your uncle so don't say because uh, people don't do what you do uh, you know i made this mistake I, I say i'm not ashamed to tell you if i'm when i make mistakes uh, how long am i going to be in this world how long are we going to be here 100 years 120 110 so if you make mistakes you tell people who make mistakes i used to be very critical of things i don't understand i used to be critical when people use things i say ah why are you using that it's not of god i repeat it god is not from your village so don't think that people must do what you understand people must not do people move as they are led so god gave this man this mandate so now listen let me tell you something about this man this man was supernaturally empowered by the holy ghost that he can pray for four days non-stop can you do that now somebody can pray for 96 hours non-stop it was a supernatural empowerment the first time i heard that this man prayed for 96 hours non-stop i said no me i must pray and i got locked the door and i began to pray i prayed i prayed i prayed as far as i was concerned i prayed when i checked the time it was 40 minutes do you know why when you are competitive the holy ghost leaves you when you begin to do things for com i'll be honest to you i look at the time as far as i was concerned i had prayed i was sweating it was 40 minutes what Oosh. so <laughs> this man was a man of prayer one time the man went to the mountain you can see it on the screen you can see the footsteps of elohim that's a man who was always on the mountain one time let me give you a story this man because sometimes he won't be at home when people come you know he's not around they'll need something he has blessed because that generation this was 1904 he answered the call of god 928 at the age of 24. so they need they, they, they always used point of contact in those days what has he prayed on what did he pray on this man blessed a stream you know stream of water he blessed a stream so anytime he's not around people go to that stream if they have somebody blind somebody paralyzed somebody crippled somebody sick They'll go to the stream and fetch water. People fetch that stream dry. Stream, stream, dry. They fetch it dry. <laughs> one time, one time he went on the 40 day fast. And when he went on the 40 day fast, he came back and told his, do his daughter to prepare tea. This is their, their traditional tea for him. The daughter was playing and moving about, playing, playing. 
and he jokingly said to the girl why are you behaving like a mad person on the spot she ran mad he only asked a question why are you behaving like a man on the spot the girl ran mad he had to go back to the mountain to say lord please take the madness away that's how god honored him that even his joke and assumption the answers to prayer one time he was praying on the mountain <laughs> as he was praying on the mountain he was praying and praying and praying a python climbed the mountain and the python rolled over him he, 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 he squatted and stooped at the position praying like that and the python covered him a huge python covered him and he kept on praying and praying when he opened his eye noticed something was covering him he shook himself and the thing fell it was a, the python that fell it dried like a stick a python dry you are you <laughs> you must pray listen to me most time most of us this mentality we think oh you don't have to pray if you want to do ministry you must pray you must give yourself to prayer you have not seen demons those of us that live in america and live in europe thank god for you but like i jokingly tell people i said the demons in america and europe they are computer literate they are very understanding they are very understanding very reasonable they don't stop you from having kids they really hook the kids on drug but the demons in africa they are very old and very experienced the ones in america and europe and the ones the bible says and the <coughs> and the serpent was more subtle than all the beasts of the field that the lord has made but the demons of africa the bible says, and the dragon so you need what is more than this world to conquer the god of this world you need to understand the instrumentality of prayer this man was arrested he was persecuted one of the things about prayer is that the devil hates a praying minister if you are in the supernatural you are in the prophetic and you are prayerful expect demonic onslaught let me give you a story one day this man of god was having his areas with his choir members his singers and they, were, they prayed and prayed and prayed and began to worship god as they were worshiping god the man began to leave the ground what they call a pre-rapture experience he began to leave the ground they saw him going they saw him going and the drummer screamed baba is going baba is going so they jumped and held his leg and began to pull him down Let me give you another story. One day, this man of God was in a revival and the woman died. Everybody began to pray. Began to pray, rise up, rise up, rise up. The woman would rise up. So he walked to the woman and said, in the name of Jesus, rise up. The woman rose up. He said, confess to the church what you came to do. The woman said that she was a witch. She came to attack. She came to kill. But something struck her. He said, are you done confessing? The woman said, yes. He said, die back. She died again. <laughs> he raised the dead and killed the dead. And killed the living. He was a man of prayer. He was a man of prayer. Now, this man, when, when he started ministering, he, he went to Lagos and got connected to a church called the Faith Abanaco years ago. And that church began to mentor him. He was submissive to them. But the hand of God was so much upon his life. He never broke away. He was submissive to them. And God was using him. So from there he went to a lorry. A current lorry in Kwara State in Nigeria. And God. He began to warn a particular town. He was warning them. That there is impending disaster coming. There is impending doom coming. So they got angry. And they arrested him. They kept him in jail. After a while, the police found nothing on him. They released him. When they released him, there was an epidemic. Chicken pox. Everybody in the town had it. It was the only one who came out and began to pray for them. And they were healed. The move of God was so strong. Imagine a man who had 40,000 attendants in crusades. At that time, in the 1930s, 1940s, great man. 
And sometimes, you know, it doesn't. because you have a program coming up. Don't pray because you have a meeting coming up. Don't pray because you have a crusade. It's, it's, such, it's such a lame mentality. Give yourself to prayer. Make prayer a, half, a lifestyle. One day without prayer makes one decay. One week without prayer makes one week. One month without prayer makes one month. Give yourself to the ministry of prayer. One time, he went to a place called Efo and Lai. And they needed a place of worship. And the king gave him a land. He felt it wasn't big enough. He needed a place out of town. And they told him the only place is the evil forest. There was a forbidden forest. And there was a, a big python that lived in that forest. So everybody avoided the place. When this man of God got there, the python showed up. Everybody was running. But this man of God walked towards the python. Big boa stretched his hand. The boa raised up its face, went down, died. These were dimensions of prayer. Today, what is happening? Where is the power? Where is the power? We spend time on things that don't matter. We spend time. So, they were with the um, Feta Banaco. After a while, there was an, an issue in the Feta Banaco and they decided to address it because issues of polygamy, issues of giving um, what's it called? Baptizing and giving communion to people with more than one wives. So it was all a doctrinal problem. They needed to sit down. The Faith Tabernacle was an offshoot of the Anglican. Now these ministries like Anglican, Catholic, Methodist, Baptist, um, Foursquare, Assemblies of God, all those are the pioneer ministries that we must give a lot of honor to. A lot of honor. These are ministries that paved the way. You cannot talk about the assemblies of God. Talk, you cannot talk about the archbishop without talking about the assemblies of God. You can't talk, you can't talk about Pastor Chris or Yakilome without talking about the assemblies of God. These are men that, these are the places where they, 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 they were raised. So don't look down. Don't, don't because you are not Pentecostal, you ignore such ministry. Honor them. Study them. As a minister of God, can I give you a counsel? Don't struggle to reign. Struggle to be relevant. Don't strive to shine. Strive to last. Don't struggle to reign. Be everywhere on all social media. No. Don't struggle to reign. Struggle to be relevant. You may not be out there, but just stay consistent for life. There are men who are struggling to reign. They want to be everywhere. They want to be on this social media platform. They want to, there are people whose social media just shut them and give them an advantage. Shut them. They are not even well grounded. Because media will expose them, put them out there, they have become fathers. These are children who have, been, who have the leverage of media. They have become fathers. And now everybody sees them as a father and they have not been properly groomed. 
if they are not wise enough to once in a while disappear and have somebody they listen to who mentors them they drop all their exposure their engagement online and all the popularity and listen they are bound to crash they start deviating and start going to error because they need to keep the tempo people come around them they want to hear new things new things some because of the new thing they want to keep dispensing they get stuck so while they were having that meeting they had almost 10 agenda some of the top leaders of the faith and banana could gather together they had 10 agenda as they discussed the first one, somebody brought a message to them that there's a revival breaking forth in the lorry, in the front line also. Breaking forth. So they couldn't continue. So there was now a crisis. They now ceded that ministry to the British. Some British people. The apostolic. So that faith tabernacle was ceded to the apostolic. After a while, there was a massive issue. That's how the Christ apostolic was bettered from the apostolic. So, and if you know the Christ apostolic, you will know raw prayers. That's one of the ministries that don't believe in drugs. You're taking medications. They pray. Learn to pray. Stop this little talk with Jesus. Little talk. Just as you had, uh, I don't have to shout. I don't have to just, you just have to be quiet. Sir, shout. There are times to shout. There are times to shout. And Jesus got to the tomb of Lazarus. And he cried with a loud voice. Why are you reading your, why are you reading your traditional Bible? Read the real Bible. He cried with a loud voice. There are times to scream in prayer. Prevailing prayer is time consuming. Prevailing prayer is time consuming. Okay, I want to tell you something now. I don't know how to explain this. You see, spiritual things, some are taught, some are caught. There are two ways, two elements, two dimensions of getting spiritual giftings and impartation. Some are taught, some are caught. There are some you cannot, you can't explain in words. There's a dimension of power and gifting. A minister can never assess until he learns to pray for long six hours five hours four hours until he engages in all of those long prayer there's a, a, a limit in power it can there's some dimensions he can't assess there are some realms that won't be open to him look at jesus in luke 6 verse 12 he prayed all night one thing we get from the life of apostle ayo babalola was prayer he have, when i studied his account it affected me to pray there was a time I fasted for 19 days. No food. I don't advise it. Don't try it at home. I don't advise it. But I did it. 19 days. No, I, I'm not gonna, I, I won't do that now. I did that. Fasted. Prayed for 24 hours. Prayed for 35 hours. You must give yourself to prayer. Real prevailing prayer. Isaiah chapter 66 verse 8. Who has had such things? Who have seen such things? Shall a nation be born at once? Shall the earth bring forth in one day? As soon as Zion travel. Look at this. Who has seen such things? Meaning, nobody has seen something like that. Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? In other words, what nobody has seen what the speed the earth has never seen bringing back giving birth to a nation at once is all this can be done if zion travels go back to prayer go back to prayer prayer is the womb of revival prayer every genuine lasting revival is founded on the premise of prayer let there be a revival in your church. Apostle Babalola was a man of prayer. He shook his world. He shook his generation. But here is a wisdom. Mighty, mighty move of God is all. The wisdom is this. If you go through the social media, you go everywhere now, you cannot see a video of him. Pictures and all that. It tells us as minister of God, 
there's a place of documentation document we need it you need documentation put yourself together let there be archives because generations need to see the move of god after you are gone if jesus tarries number two he died at the age of 55 1959 he died so that was not long life because why did he die so young number one when you overuse your body listen to me if you always fast 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 you don't rest you will die it's, it's as it's as simple as that when you overuse your body there are times you rest you fast and rest for a long time gather yourself get some energy get some strength don't abuse your body when you are done with vigil if you know you're doing two jobs three jobs take it easy on your body when you're done with vigil try and rest rest don't finish vigil from vigil you enter another prayer meeting from that prayer meeting you enter bible study no sir don't abuse your body it was so anointed but he died at the age of 55. 55. Also, he died young because of too many attacks. Some of the manifestations that they saw that time were strange. So people began to attack him. He was arrested. He was attacked. He was jailed. We have to preserve servants of God. Let's do our best. Because there are men of God who may not know their value and their worth until they are gone. People today make reference to the late Archbishop Idahosa. Now they see his value. Let's stop attacking ministers of God. Let's stand to defend them. This man died young. Imagine such a man was still alive. Imagine somebody like the Archbishop was still alive. We will go there and just sit down and draw from his wealth of wisdom. Draw from his fountain of knowledge. If the bishop was still alive by now, he would have been 84 years old. But while the bishop was alive, I grew up under his ministry, I can tell you. Attack. Everywhere attack. Every week, front pages of paper. This allegation, this accusation, this allegation. We were like, what is all this? Attacks. And you'll be surprised today to discover that many of the attacks that pastors go through, you'll be surprised there are pastors behind them. I want to say this to you. If you are a pastor and your assignment is to keep criticizing other pastors, please go and open the boutique. You are not called. Go and open the boutique and start selling clothes. You are not called to be a pastor. If your assignment, your calling, is to attack pastors, attack pastors. You say, you hear people say, the Lord has called me to open the eyes of people. God called me to open the eyes of people. All these first prophets who are this week, God called me to open the eyes of people. You are blind. You are blind. You talking, you are blind. You are blind. Your own eyes need opening. You are blind. You have no calling. If your calling is to destroy the work other people have built, you have no calling. We are not yet reached out to the world. We are reaching out to the church. You say you want to, you want to help Christians. Go into the world and preach the gospel. This is going to the church and correct the pastors. Go into the world and preach the gospel. Not going to the church and correct pastors. Go to the world. Go and evangelize. Save sinners. Let's stop attacking. This man was attacked. Also, one thing that's very important. Apostle Babalola was a great man, but he was mostly alone some of the times we must understand if you are not no matter how you have been betrayed no matter how you have been stabbed you must have relational skill relate have one or two people you relate with man is a relational being man was created to relate have people just one or two relate with people have people you pray with have people that can speak over your life it is very important is going to be with the Lord. We must not lose our own. Not every minister who died was called home. Some were sent home to rest. 
because of the too many attacks let's not lose ministers let's protect them let's pray for them ministers who have been a blessing enough to your life let's stand for them i pray for you that the anointing for prayer the anointing for intercession will fall upon you that from now the more you pray the more you want to pray i decree a prayer fire just like Apostle Joseph Ayo Babalola shook his world and his generation by his intimacy with God and his, 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 his love for prayer and fasting. The grace to pray. The anointing for prayer. The more you pray, the more you want to pray. The more you pray, the more you want to pray. Receive the grace for prayer. Receive that prayer's fire. That impartation to pray. To continually pray. To pray in the day. Pray at noon. Pray at night. I decree it in the name of Jesus. That anointing that put the devil on the run. That anointing that in this time, as a man of God, witches we are confessing. Witches will bow. Demons will bow. Her bodies will put out of business. God used him mightily to shape the kingdom of darkness. You become a terror. Your ministry will be a terror to the kingdoms of darkness. Receive that grace. Receive that grace. Look at that. Look at that. God is ushering people into the apostolic dimension. God is all, I'm seeing nine people. I'm seeing your spiritual ears and your eyes becoming open to begin to see and hear from the Lord directly. I'm seeing somebody by the name Franklin. You are an apostle. God says a new season for you. You are entering a dimension of grace. Someone from East Africa, I'm seeing God saying that they're beginning to give you the anointing to interpret tongues as you pray. You pray in tongues and you hear the meaning. I see healing grace upon a man by the name Sam. I'm Mateng. You are Ghanaian. I'm seeing God. Oh, pray your task. God is putting a knife in your hand. Spiritually. As you lay hands on the sick, there will be an operation. God will carry out an operation. It's a healing anointing. I'm hearing Rhoda. Rhoda. God said you are going to be a prophetess. There's going to be an anointing on you from on the 18th of this month. He said there's going to be an anointing to hear and prophesy from on the 18th. Rhoda. There's a grace. Receive that grace to pray. A revolution. Receive the giftings that you desire. The giftings and the dimension you crave for. Manifest it from now. Peretuda Candas. Peretuda Candas. Perusa. Nobody watching me around the world will remain prayerless. Receive that mantle to pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Those of you watching via Zoom, I speak a blessing upon you. In the name of Jesus, if you have the ministry, have a call of God upon your life, I decree you will not struggle anymore. You flow and flow freely in the spirit. As you enter into a new day, like you enter into Sunday tomorrow, your place of worship, you will see manifestations. You see the grace of God in Jesus' name. God bless you. Just know this. I'm praying for you. And as a team, we'll go together and bring victory for the kingdom. God bless you. Have a good night.